Hey everyone, we are back for another Interfacing Linux this time. Hmm, I got something. Look at that. No, it's not a diseased iPod. I promise you, it's not. 100%. What it is, is a Phonic Firefly 202 Portable. Something I ran across, naturally, on eBay. I've never seen one of these before. I even asked the internet. Like, hey, what is this thing? Internet, just give me a shrug emoji. So you know what I had to do. I had to pick it up. This is Surplus New Old Stock. Um, what was it? $29.95. There's currently three available if you want to take the Pepsi Challenge and or play the home game. I get this from NW Liquidators. But it's a curious piece of kit, man. Um, it has two quarter-inch TRS inputs, two outputs. It is a Firewire device, so you'd need like a Firewire card. This, this comes in PCIe flavor. They're about 20 30 bucks. Let's you play around with a bunch of cool stuff. And uh, it can be bus powered or it has, there's a chunky power supply. We'll do with the unboxing because this is brand new, even though it is from 2009. Had to do an unboxing, why not? And uh, yeah, it is compatible with OS X and Windows XP. But we got to find out whether or not it Linux. So, let's do that thing we do. Uh, as I said, we're going to do an unboxing. Then I'm going to plug some microphones into it. That was a bit of an adventure because quarter inch XLR, we, we had to do some things to make that work. But we'll do that. I might plug a guitar into it. I'm not making any promises. Apologies if I do. Then I will see if I can get it fed into our Linux Seamcast weekly outdoor session. Let it run for 50 minutes. See if we get some X runs, and I'll probably try it with Fado Mixer. See if we can get control of anything, because the only external control is the headphone knob. So if we can't get anything else uh, with Fado Mixer, we'll be stuck with line level. That could be a problem. Then, um, hey, I will come back and let you know what I think about a device you'll probably never be able to get. Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Mmm, look at it. It's brand new, really. If I haven't, uh, if I didn't cock up the box taking off the uh, packaging stuff, it would be in mint condition. I've destroyed it. It's worthless, more so than it probably originally was. But this is our Firefly 202 portable FireWire interface unboxing. Yeah. I have no idea what's inside. And uh, not much in the way of surprises there. We have a manual. Hmm. Let's see. What wisdom can this impart from 2009? It's basic. Let's see. When does it insert Windows? I'm always curious about Windows installations. Like how is this done? It did use ASIO, so that's oh look, block diagram. Plug things in, plug things out. At no point do you receive bacon. Understood. Anything else in here? Um nope, quarter inch TRS in out. And yes, put things in front, put things in back. There's the wheel, which does not click. This this is heavier than the unit itself, and the unit is made out of solid metal. This might have been worth it just to get this power supply, man. I mean, that's a beast. 120, well, it's 12 volts. Why did I say 120? I can't read. Anyway, we're not going to be using that because you can power this guy over the bus. Oh, boy. Ah, sparkly, you, well, I almost said spark, this is my first sparkly firewire cable. Nice. And, um, some disc thing. I'm not going to open that. I'm going to save that for a special occasion when I want to plug in something sparkly. Okay. Let's further destroy the collector value of our Firefly 202. I'm just going to rip this open. 
Yeah. I'm not going to, uh, Oh, there it, it does have tape, but just to upset people at home. Rah. Okay. It's full build. I mean, this wheel's plasticky, but all of the encasing. Nice old metal, but no clicks. Nothing. I like that. We get inputs one and two. We got phones. We got a fire wire lead. And outputs one and two. Don't eat wheelie bins. Fire wire input and your 12 volt. Cool. Plenty of weight, too. We're going to need one of these. That's right. 1394B, 1394A, PCIe, yeah. <laughs> it still weirds me out, but they're cheap. They're like 20 bucks. Why do we need one of those? Well, of course. It's a firewire device, so we are going to need a fire noodle. Hey, it did the thing it was supposed to do. Neat. The first thing I want to do is see if this is going to work with a Fado Mixer. This is kind of a big thing because there are no external controls on the device outside of the headphone. But, yeah. Looks like we get a womp womp on that. Fado does not know what it is, but it was worth a try. Up next, Cadence. Because, hey man, it's a fine way interface. Uh, this is a good little GUI. Let's try to get it set up using 256 period buffer three using the Firewire driver. Just your basic real-time um, device interface, HW0. Let's smash that start button, fam. It does take a second. Um, but it lights up, so it's 256. 48k. Let's take a look at KTM. Yeah. yeah. It even connects with the uh, Pulse Audio Jack Syncs. That's one thing Cadence likes to do. But let's throw it in our door and see if we can do a session. So, we're doing some mic test. We're going to start off with what I use day in and day out, and that is the Golden Age D2 Large Diaphragm Dynamic Microphone. Now, the Phonic Firefly is wired in, but since everything comes in line level and there's really no way to get control over it, I have it running through my old trusty Art TPS2, then into the Phonic Firefly. Okay, moving on to this guy. This old classic, uh, the OSP High Performance DL-330. Little tiny dynamic mic. It's like a Shure 57, but I think it sounds just a little bit better. But this is running much like the Golden Age D2 dynamic mic into the Art TPS2, then into our... It even makes noise. Uh, Onic Firefly 202. Up next... Condenser time. We get to test the phantom power on this uh, old preamp and see what it sounds like on the AT2020. Oh, it's a, definitely a blast from the past. We are with the AT2020 Cutteroid Condenser Microphone using that old-fashioned phantom power, but it gets the job done. 
And this is running, like everything else, um, into the art, TPS2, and then into the phonic Firefly. 202. Not bad. It's working. Okay. All right, now it's everyone's favorite part where old man fiddles around with guitar, I, a guitar even. That I absolutely have not picked up since we did the Inbox 2 reviews. It's been about a month. I told myself, hey, it's one of the reasons I'm doing this series is to get back into playing. And that, that was a lie, kids. So let's see if this thing is... In tune. It's a Gibson, so everything's gonna be fine till we get to a G. G? Nope. G. Everything. Everything but G. Um, so what do we have? This is plugged directly. Directly into the Phonic Firefly 202. It is... The only thing I have it running through is noise repellent just to kill out some of the line noise. Just that stent, you know, I mean... That nonsense. And uh, just a compressor. Just bumping it up. Give him a little more punch. So, I don't know. What, basic chords? Uh, I'm not even going to bother with the distortion on this. But, yeah. I mean, it doesn't sound horrible, does it? That's uh pretty bad. One of the big things, this is the one thing that really killed it for me, is YouTube will just slap you down for any copyright strike, and like most of the stuff I remember how to play is like Metallica and stuff like that. Can't play that. Okay, short and sweet. Pros and cons. Let's start with some cons, man. Just can't find any information about these things on the internet. The Bonic Firefly 202. Uh, it only has quarter inch in and out. They are balanced. There's that thing. But no access to Fado Mixer. So you're kind of stuck. You know, you're going to be using the volume with a door or whatever door you're plugged into. Outside of that, you're going to have to use a preamp or something along those lines to control your levels. In and out, that's decent enough. It gets a bit warm. I don't know if that's necessarily a con, but I gotta say, man, it didn't get... Oh, something is terribly wrong with this device. It, at no point did I think about unplugging it, but after about 45 minutes, you could definitely tell the metal casing was doing its job. But that's the only negative stuff I have to say about our sweet little phonic firefly. 202. Okay, one more thing. Vocals. Vocals sounded okay. You know, I did have to adapt the XLR, run through a preamp, and come in over a quarter inch. If you can excuse my just atrocious attempts at um, guitar playing, that didn't sound very good. I'm. It wasn't. Mm, a little muddy. Just a little muddy. Fun. I've heard better. But then again, this was 20 bucks. What do we expect? Positives again. Vocal sounded just fine with it, and um, relatively low latency is what you would expect from a wire device under Linux. Works. It was stable, no crashes, and uh, yeah, that's kind of that. I, I didn't want to get too deep uh, into this because. Go look on eBay yourself, aside from this one listing. This is the first time, and quite possibly the last time, I will see one listed. Apparently, they made these, they made six of them over a period of one week. I don't know. I'm just making that up. That's what it seems like. I mean, I, I don't have any plans of using this, but in a pinch, in a pinch, um, yeah, I, I could see that working. All right. Boom. Let's cue the beautiful party patrons. The people who make this show possible, this is just one of my side projects. 
where I like to, um, I don't want to say always play with vintage stuff, but I do like to answer a very, very simple question. And especially right now with the Fado website just being knackered, so you really don't know what works and what doesn't. Um, being able to pick up devices like this, taking the home game Pepsi challenge and being able to tell you, yes, with Fado, this most definitely makes with the working. Okay, that's going to do it. As always, get out there and make something awesome.